Friends, like we have said before, the cicada is actually used for creating images. Now, how can we make that image in the most beautiful way? We will try to convey that to you. Now here, let's try to understand the screen in which we will create the cicada. Look, this is the page on which we will create that image. This is the page we will do the drawing in. Look at the right side. We have the toolbox section, we have the toolbox over there. Moreover, we have the basic objects, elements and control sections. So, in order to use the basic objects, you can drag them and drop them into the page. Other than that, in the elements tab, we have our fundamental SCADA objects. Let's close that for now. You see that in the elements section, we have our buttons, bars and fundamental SCADA functions such as gouges. They are present in this section. You can use them by dragging and dropping them into the page. So, apart from that, we have the control section. In this control section, there is a graphic viewer, video player and recipe function and various functions. We will try to explain these elements and control sections to you in detail. So, when you take a look, if you look carefully, you will see that these menus look very similar to the menus we have used in the TIA portal, WinCC Flexible and our panel trainings. Actually, it is the same. There is a twist option here and also lots of objects, so they felt the need to place them here. For that reason, these have wider menus. Look, for example, I don't remember seeing something like a gauge in our HMI trainings. For example, they placed a gauge here, there is also a clock graph over there, so you can see that the menus of the SCADA are wider. Furthermore, they place different things under the control objects. We will explain all of these to you. Now, after showing this, let's introduce the menus. Now, after showing this, let's try to show you uh, the menus in which we will create the drawings. Let's delete this, and friends, like I've said, we will show this to you later. So, after selecting that, after completing the operations, we may have to make some fine adjustments. For example, we will perform them using this menu over here. So, we can call this menu as the menu in which there are the tool buttons. Now look, there is the text expression there, you are able to select its font from there. These are also similar to the menus of the Office softwares. Our friends who use the various applications of Microsoft Office surely know about these menus. These menus are similar to the menus of the Office. From there, look, you can enlarge the text. From there, friends, you can see the options to thicken the text, make it italic or underline it. Besides, you are able to zoom in or out just like you did in Microsoft Word or Excel. Friends, when you wish, you can select the text and then when you click it, uh, the text will be centered. You can also pull it to right or left, or you can use many settings. From here, there are lots of fonts that you can use. These are up to you. We are only concerned about how to make the best image in this software. So let's center this and show it to you like this. Now look, if you wish to change the text color, you are able to change it from here. You can change the background color of the box from here and you can do it from here. So what can you do apart from that? Apart from that, you can change the color from here and let me show you. Let me show it from there. So we have changed the frame color by doing that. Um, look, there wasn't anything visible in the corners, but we can change the color of our frame by doing that. So we can also increase or decrease the thickness of our frame by doing this. Friends, by doing that you have the chance to change the type of the line of the frame through that menu. So I have showed you the fundamentals of drawing. You will learn them better by using them. Friends, apart from that, apart from these, let's place the two objects over each other. So from there you can select which one will be up front and which one will be appointed to the back. Let's select them like this. In any case, you can see what these buttons do by placing the cursor on them and waiting for a second. So, if you want this to turn 90 degrees, you can do it like this. Moreover, if you do this, it takes its symmetry. You are able to take its symmetrical version by doing this. There are many applications like this one. So, you are able to multiply these by using copy-paste method. So, let's straighten these up. Let me turn that one again, and so, as you see, you are able to perform the operations you want. Friends, look, 
you can align the objects from here. If you notice, the alignment operation can't be done using a single object. Let's select two. Let's select two objects. Look, let's select the two objects and there are different alignment options here. It centered these two like this. Other than that, let's do this. Now let's select them. Look, when we click on the bottom left alignment option, it centered the objects like this. So what does it do? It centers the objects by taking that line as a reference point. Now look, this time let's select something like this. Look, it brought here and centered them like this. It aligns the objects by centering them. So you can use these like this. At first, you may say something like, well, where am I going to use these? But you will be able to perform these operations much smoothly when you want to create your own SCADA drawings. You will be able to create SCADA projects however you want via these methods and menus. And you will use these menus somehow. You can't do it without these menus. So we do them like this. There are also different types of menus here, but they are not active right now. So let's select these two. So why aren't these active? This is because they will become active when you select three objects. This is a menu that will be activated upon selecting three objects. So I have done it like this, but this menu actually works according to the center of gravity of the objects. You can think of it like that. In other words, it works according to the balance point of the objects. It tries to proportion them in some way. This is a method that tries to proportion the objects according to the state of the screen and the position of the objects. Look what it do. By doing this, it created a balance point by taking the bottom side as reference according to the sizes of the objects. Well, you should not think of this like a balance point, rather it evenly distributes the objects vertically. So it made an alignment in that order. Friends, apart from that, we have another menu here. This one is a method that sets the vertical and horizontal distance between these objects. You will understand these more clearly in further applications as you use them. These are settings which will be understood better as you use them. Their intended use or application or use may not be truly explained, but you will understand them when we show them to you. So, we have another menu here. Look, let's say that uh, you gave a feature to this object and made the necessary settings. Look, let's say that you want to copy that feature to the others. You will click on this and when you do this, you have conveyed the features of that button automatically to the others. Look, you have automatically conveyed the features of that one to the others. This is important. In other words, when you want to convey the features of an object to the others, you are able to do it like I've showed you. And here is my zoom settings. When I click that, I get a tool via which I can zoom into any field. So what do you do with it? By clicking here, you are able to see the objects a little bit closer. You also have the chance to perform that operation from the bottom right corner of the screen. Or you can perform that operation via the control button on your keyboard. In other words, while the control button is pressed, when you move the mouse wheel down or up, it will be performing the zoom in or out operation. You can zoom in or out using the mouse wheel button and control button. Friends, there are other things that I want to convey you, such as different features regarding these objects. But let's talk about them later. We will explain you many operations regarding these objects, but later. You see, we have the properties menu here. I will explain you the use of the properties menus and how to convey an operation through them. In further applications, we will go back to the many of the topics we haven't explained or missed. We may have many topics which we haven't explained right now, but we will talk about them later. I have told you that we will explain them as the occasion arises. So I have shown you the use of these menus. You already know the menus over here because you have a command of the TIA Portal software. You already know how to program a PLC, whether it is an S7-1200 or 1500 or 300. Therefore, you have a command of these menus as well. For that reason, our explanation regarding these drawing-related menus is sufficient for the time.